people always say that affiliate marketing is dead but every time you look around the shows are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger there's so much money to be made you know Hey guys, just want to say a quick thank you to our sponsors, not just Adam, but Ringba, of course. If you haven't already, grab your copy of the Paper Call Revolution, which you can find on Amazon now. Absolutely. What's going on, everyone? Coming to you live from Dubai with a very special guest, Attila, also known as AKA I Am Attila. Thanks for joining me, brother. Thank you for having me. One of the OGs in the affiliate space. What, when was your first? campaign what year 1997 1997 dude what were you what platform were you advertising if on any or was it direct mail or what were you doing then Matt? i was in high school and i was making these websites for pirated apps on geo cities <laughs> and fortune city and we were hosting links to the downloads and i put cyber thrill casino battle ads on it and i was getting paid two cents per click what was your cost per click? Nothing, because it was all lean Straight. and organic, right? Yeah. And that was the first time ever that I have done affiliate marketing. And best, I had no idea I was doing affiliate marketing, you know? So Was that in Canada? Or was yeah, I was living in Canada. I grew up in Canada. And uh, it wasn't until 2008 when my wife actually suggested that, hey, why don't I look into what my friend Conrad is doing online to make all these crazy money. Like he was buying houses, M3, BMW, like crazy life. to me. 2008. Yeah. And that's how I found the industry. And the rest is history. What did you do from 1997 till 2008? I finished high school. I went to university. <laughs> you know, usual stuff. Yeah. I worked two jobs. I worked in Yellow Pages in sales and also in a hosting, you know, and... I was very good at that, but I didn't like the nine to five life, you know? I love affiliate marketing because you're free. You're free to travel. You're free to set your own hours. You're free to work as little or as little, many hours as you want. So what's, what's your like uh, superpower? Are you more of a developer? Are you more of like a business no, developer? Yeah, I'm more creative, visionary, and networking, man. I love meeting people. I have so many friends in so many different places all around the world like it's incredible yeah we got connected what maybe two months ago yeah exactly and got introduced into the all economy group right right yeah. it's cool yeah but i saw your show before then actually so <laughs> here we are yeah here we are cool man what um so we're here in dubai at the, at the show what are some things that you're seeing today in the affiliate space that's maybe working or not working or the conversations that are going around uh, I see change, right? Like one of the constant things in affiliate is change. Like stuff that you do today might not be here tomorrow because Google, Facebook, TikTok, buyers, new policies might come, which will put an end to it, right? So you always have to network and you always have to be vigilant to know, you know, what is the next step in case what you're doing right now is going to die. So this is huge. So you've had almost technically 30 years in the affiliate space. Uh, yeah, I would say we can count. Count back to 97. But yeah, I, that was just like a little dabble, you know, like I was a high school kid, you yeah, know. So and 20 years. So yeah, like from 2008. What is saying? What's been your peak and your lowest moment in, in this journey? Uh, my peak is always right now because I always learn new things. I used to be like a jack of all trades, right? I would do everything. And now I turned 40 last year. So I'm finding that I don't enjoy sitting on a computer 14 hours every day anymore. Plus, I have two kids, a 14-year-old and an 8-year-old daughter. And uh, I don't have the time, you know, to to be on the computer all the time. To do fresh, fresh. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's exhausting and I want to spend time with them because they grow up really fast and then they're like screw you dad I don't want to hang out with you you know like I got my own stuff to do so I want to take advantage of the moment you know right now so I'm hiring a lot we're hiring crazy amounts and expanding so that's why I think right now is the best because things are always changing and I'm getting better you know with more skills more people that I meet it's always you know growing
what's what's working for you right now when it comes to balancing your time with your family and your business and what where do you where do you see yourself apply like putting your focus and energy next uh so balance for me is because uh it's possible made possible by my wife dora like she's a pinnacle in my success because she's a full-time mom and being a mom is like a 24 7 job it's a hard job yeah because dude especially when the kids are young you have to wake up at night and she was doing all that like she's a true trooper and she's she's great right so she takes them to school usually in the morning and i jump right in like at seven o'clock you know and i work until uh, two something like that and then i go with her to pick them up and I take a break because I'm in Europe. So we have a six hour difference between my time and also Miami time. So the fun starts, you know, when the call center starts yep. at 10 o'clock EST. So that's like 5 p.m. my time, you know, so 5, 4, 5. So you find it's easier to wake up at like a earlier time and get to work so yeah you have your day right? yeah because i have to do my other stuff right like uh calls and lead gen is all like done in the united states mostly it's not really in europe that much they don't even know what lead really means here you know it's really funny and we do a lot of other stuff like search arbitrage and content arbitrage and i attend to that and i have an office with 14 media buyers and we have a big operation so we always have to solve problems because they're always coming you know it's always. like it's constant and I do that and then I take a break, go with Dora, pick up the kids, have lunch, la la la, and then I get back into it, you know. Into the fire. Yeah. <laughs> Watching those RPCs, man, and those calls. Oh, dude. So when, when did you first start doing paper call? I, I first actually tried paper call in 2015, but I was making insane money capping out Nutra in uh, the Nordics, in Norway, Finland, and Denmark. And, um, I was like, ah, oh, fuck this. Like, I, I have to focus. If I want to make money, you got to focus on something and be extremely good at it. So I was just, I'll just do Nutra, you know. It's, I'm doing really good, you know, 100% profit margin. Yeah. Great, you know. So there's no competition because guys were doing Nutra back then too. But they were always doing, like, English-speaking geos. And I was like, you know what? Everyone's doing English. I'm going to take the extra effort and I'll translate all these landers and make up my own celebrity angles, you know, like. So, yeah, and I was doing that, and I tried tech, I was like, oh, dude, I have to watch which buyer is the best, and then always, like, you know, route and pick and one priorities. And, and this is, this is before Ring the... This is in Volca, in Volca, in Volca. I was doing live links also. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I know, it was a pain in the ass, because you have to manually do everything. So now Ringba is amazing, like, yeah. it's really good. Shout out to Ringba. Hell yeah, Adam and Harrison. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so that's basically it. And it's constantly changing and it's a lot of fun. I love it, you know. What's your favorite part about it? Obviously, besides being able to have time for your family. My favorite part is learning new stuff and meeting people. It's constant learning. Like you got to learn because things change really fast. So being at the, you know, the best you can be, you have to continuously learn. What's, up? What's been the biggest, like your biggest aha takeaway lesson you've seen just in the last few months in this industry my biggest aha and lesson uh it's actually not really like an aha and lesson it's more like coming back to the same thing that if it doesn't work right away even if you spend an extra ten thousand dollars trying a million more creatives it's not going to work you know like the winners, they show themselves right away. The offer itself is... Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yep. right away. Like, this... I fall into this trap over and over and over again, despite doing it for so long. It's absolutely horrendous, but it happens. It's like, fuck, you know? Like, yeah. seriously. But every offer, too, would you, would you agree that it has its own trend in itself, right? Has its own season, especially like the evergreen, like insurance ones. Yeah. If you try to run ACA in December, you're going to see different numbers than if you try to run it for the first time in March. I never, I didn't run ACA now. I tried it with uh, Henry Ads Factory, but again, I didn't have time to focus. So that was in open enrollment time and I didn't make it work. And then I was in Miami and Adam invited me down and stuff. And I told them like, dude, I tried to make ACA work and I did it. He's like, how'd you do it? And I explained to him. 
and he says, dude, you, your number one mistake, you didn't get your own ring back out, so you couldn't listen to the calls, you know, what the feedback Who is. is routing direct? Yeah, I didn't know. No. Hey, when you're a new... Bro, I went through the learning curve the last six months. So yeah. I'm not judging. I understand. You know, so... Yes. So I, that was what I, I was like, dude, that was a huge mistake. And number two, you were sending all the calls to one buyer. Yes. You do not do that. So I was like, hmm, okay. And then I went back with all the tips that he gave me and he was extremely helpful. And that's how I made Spanish debt profitable. Yeah. And now another challenge currently with Spanish debt is that, dude, not that many people have 15K credit card debt. So, yeah, there's a lot of people that are rejects. This, this goes back to get like with talking specifics. This goes back to like, your buyer network, your relationships. Yeah. You, you're super connected, man. I guarantee you, if you even just posted on your Instagram and said, hey, who's got a Spanish debt buyer that would take 10K debt bonus? You'll probably get five DFs. Yeah, but we have a lot that have under 10. And yeah, so it's something to sub. But you're right. I still don't have a good enough network in this space. But you do. You, do, <laughs> you just got to look. You got to look into it. I think it's there. For yeah. You. So, yeah. So I'm still a noob, right? But I love being a noob because it's a short learning curve. Yeah. Like last year, um, this is actually, I like learning stuff. So last year, someone introduced me to value investing the concept of value investing basically how warren buffett and charlie munger may he rest in peace um build their fortune by basically evaluating companies on their intrinsic value so i spent like two months reading learning consuming everything about this uh concept of value investing and then i threw i think uh five hundred thousand dollars into investments and I hit one SMCI, like a silicon manufacturer, $79. And now if you check it, it's 806. What? 10X. And now I'm like, fuck, why did I put 100,000 into that? I only put 10K in. Cause hindsight isn't a choice, right? Yeah, but the cool <laughs> thing is I'm up really well That's using awesome. these values. So learning new stuff, being a noob is exciting. When you start, uh, you stop being a noob, and it becomes like monotone, like boring. That's how you know you got to pivot. Make a team for that stuff if it's making money. And then move on to the next thing. At least me, because I love learning stuff and being a noob and me called a noob. And then having guys laughing like he's such a dumbass, you know. It's like, whatever, you know. So I'm going to make a million bucks and then one then, you know. Like, seriously, so. If you didn't do affiliate marketing, what would you predict or guess you might be doing today instead? Knowing who you are, obviously this has shaped who you are today, but just out of curiosity. So I used to actually uh, organize like dance events, like ultra music festival in Miami. Oh, really? Yeah. What type? Dance events. Yeah. That's how I met my wife, actually. Like what type of dance event? Like techno and trance and house. Oh, nice. Man. Like huge ones. Like we had Armin Van Buren, and Tiesto and all these other ones, you know. Holy moly. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah, we, we were working the biggest ones. Well, the same age, so... Yeah, so I can, I when I was that. young, you know, before I came to Europe and I met my wife, I actually came here to organize events here. But uh, the demographics and uh, the need and demand and all this stuff is way different from Vancouver. Like, they want a lot and they don't have the money to pay up so that you can actually make a profit. So I lost a fuck ton of money and that's why Dora said... Okay, we should stop doing, you know, these parties. I look into what um, Conrad is doing. But if I wasn't doing affiliate marketing, I would definitely be doing something fun, entrepreneurial, you know, because I love these chat. It's so much, so much fun. I don't know. I guess you gotta be born uh, this style, like to be an entrepreneur, like shaped in a young age. Yeah, like that. You get to, like this hunger out of finding success, and uh, you can handle failure because there's a lot of falling. What's been, what's been your hardest day or moment in, in the last 10, 15 years in this case? Hardest day or moment? Not hitting, like, after a Nutra ended, there was a, uh, like a time, one and a half years, when no matter which campaigns I tried, nothing was scalable. Like, I was losing money, losing money, losing money, losing money. And I actually took a year off and then built a house in Budapest while this was happening because I couldn't handle it, dude. It drains you. 
That's why we actually had a bunch of suicides in the industry, you know, like uh, occur. And there's a lot of mental health issues. That's why I actually, when I had these lows, actually went to see like a psychiatrist or like a counseling or I don't know what you call it. Yeah. But to talk it out, you know, because it really helps. Like it's incredible. And a lot of my friends who are big marketers, they also go see professional help because the highs are very nice. Very high. But the lows are fucking nuts, right? You think that that I remember this, like I had a Porsche in my garage and I was walking down the street and I thought that the, the homeless guy that has money in his tin cup has more money than me. You know, it's a stupid analogy because yeah. you're losing every day. So fuck, what did I make that day? Less yeah, than zero. All day and you lost thousands, right? Exactly. It was horrible, man. It was horrible. So that was the lowest. Yeah. That's the Philly curse. It I, is. I'm young. I was, at his, I was at his penthouse like a month and a half ago. And, and he was, I can't, I can't remember how the conversation came up, but he specifically said the Philly curse. And yeah. But I get it. I've, I've been through one of those in the last, like just learning paper call. The learning curve of learning paper call was, for me, it was very hard. For some people, maybe it wasn't the same experience. But yeah. Yeah, man. It's, yeah. it's never, very rarely, like we've all had that campaign that goes like this. But very rarely does that actually happen, from my experience. Yeah, it, it doesn't happen. You're right. Especially not now. Like, uh, I always regret not starting in 2008 with paid ads. I actually started with uh, SEO, like making sites, content sites, and then using the different tricks that you could use, like Xrummer to rank stuff. Yeah. It, dude, it was working amazing. And I was- Keyword stuffing and all like a little hacks. Yeah, like all these stuff. Like I remember I was made, if I made $300 in one day living in Eastern Europe, multiply, that's like almost 10K, that's huge. Average salary at that time- In 2008. Was, yeah, <laughs> average salary at that time was $200 yeah. and I was living, dude. It's like living in Thailand and being a king on $1,000 a month, you know, same, same concept. So I remember, uh, this was absolutely crazy and uh yeah it's only gotten better from there right so what despite at least one or two people that you ran into maybe that are like hey i've seen you before or you know, a conversation came up and they, they were saying yeah i'm meeting them with stream what would you have for our audience because i'm sure some people watching this are newer or have been in but they're struggling what's like a piece of advice that you would have for them that they're getting into this brand new or if they've been in and they're at one of those low points like you're talking about. So if they're at a low point, yeah. then they're not alone. It's important to note that it's the, there's this misconception that everybody's killing it because guys believe that they, when they meet you, they cannot be frank with you. They believe they have to say, dude, I'm doing thank you a day, man, you know? It, and it's not like that at all truth is probably that they're not doing 10k they're just are scared to be themselves and tell you the truth because they think that if they do that you're not gonna tell them you know what to run or some good intel you know it's like the ego it is an ego i don't have that ego man if i'm that i'll say fucking sucks now you know if i'm up and i'm like no it's okay you know so i'm all about that be honest like i believe honesty is the best policy like seriously that's the best like if someone's brand new was getting into it, then don't be scared about losing money because as you said, you're not gonna hit the winner right away. No. So you might don't be lucky. scared. Yeah. Don't bet on luck. Yeah, buddy. Exactly. So don't be scared about losing money. Be honest. Because the guys that are in this for the long term, they respect that man. Hundred percent, I know. It's a marathon. They also know that. They also know that we're going to have highs and we're going to have lows. The affiliate marketer's curse, as Adam yes. says. <laughs> right? So. How, what's been a pivotal point where relationship building has paid off for you? Sorry? What's been a pivotal point in the last few years for you where relationship building has paid dividends out of like, maybe you invested years into being friends and like open and honest with someone and then it, when you needed it the most, it just showed up when they were able to help you and when you least expected it. Okay, so there's actually a lot of, lot of stories regarding to that where I feel I kind of like reached the pinnacle. So there were a bunch of guys in the industry who've been around for a long time and they used to think 
back in 2015 in those early days that I wasn't real, you know? And they always like, I felt that, you know, when I met them, said hi, they were like, fuck, I hate this guy. And now, like, they're like two of them are like very, very good friends. Like one of them is like my best friend right now. And, and I'm like, I'm glad I earned your trust, you know, and all this stuff, you know, like they will say that I'm real. And it feels so good to get that recognition from these guys who are like OGs, like real OGs who do like massive volume. Like if they, they're not going to tell you that they're doing big volume, you're going to hear that from the network that they do big volume. Right. It's like they don't advertise it. That's usually the bigger players are yeah. talking about how much. So when I, when I get, you know, feedback from the guys to my face, you know, that I used to think that, you know, I didn't like you before, but now I think that you're fucking awesome. It means a lot because these guys are the real deal, you know? Yeah. So that is absolutely like an honor. Like, let's go on. Uh, What's your predictions for affiliate, the affiliate space as a whole, the next year or two? And what, are you, most, and what are you most excited about too? Uh, you know, there's this, uh, we actually talk about this on main stage right now. They ask us this question and people always say that affiliate marketing is dead. But every time you look around, the shows are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. There's so much money to be made, you know, because, you know, as they say, no money, no honey. No money, no honey, baby. LFG show. Let's go. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> And uh, there's money to be made and uh, there's new opportunities coming all the time. That's why you have to be very well networked. Always meet new people, meet the newbies. Because the newbies are going to meet the guy that's fucking crushing it, you know. You never know and then the newbie's going to know that you helped them and he'll come back. The full circle. And the karma's going to come around. 100%. I'm a karma believer. Oh, so. huge karma people. Yeah. Any, any, to finish. Is there an idea, a quote, or a lesson you want to share with everyone listening? Yeah, there's actually a very good one. Um, don't fall into the trap that if you're testing something, you continue to throw money at it. If it doesn't work, leave it, test something else. Because usually winners show themselves super fast. Like even if you have a shitty ad and the offer is good, it's going to make a break even on the shitty ad. So then you work at creating a better ad, finding a better angle. Like I made this mistake many times. Don't make that mistake. There are exceptions to that. Like if like paper call, for example, maybe you're testing the, a great ad with a great funnel to a single bad buyer. Yeah. Would that be an exception or would you still play by that rule? Uh, yeah, there again, the offer sucks because the buyer sucks, right? True. So how you built the offer. Yes. I made that mistake. Like seriously, like I'm an ACA newbie. That was my first mistake. Yeah. Ever. So no shit. I think that may be a common mistake with people that come from an affiliate background and get into calls. They don't realize how much difference the call center makes. Yes. It's everything. I think it's more important sometimes than the ad. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Because, and I actually worked in sales, you know, at the yellow pages and we had 150 people. It was outside sales, like we had to dial out existing customers and we had 150 people and I was one of the best, like well, LinkedIn, my manager actually left, you know, really after so many years, you know, and the thing is in that many uh, people in a call center, you're going to have your superstars. So if they're not working that day, right away, the RPC on that call says it's not good. It's not good. It's your problem. That's it's why problem. see an affiliate that comes into this and doesn't know how calls work in call centers. They don't know that you have to freaking every day look at the stats and change the priorities, right? Constantly. If we just hired someone full time to do routing, because that's such a valuable piece. Yeah, that's like how you make the money. It's like you all lose money. Yeah, I can tell you in affiliate, you can use RedTrack. And you add the different offers and Red Check has like an auto optimize feature where you can set, you know, optimize by EPC and then route 80% of the clicks to offer doing the highest EPC and continue testing the 20% of the traffic on the other offers. And if something else takes over, becomes a higher EPC, rotate it in, you know, with, with, uh, with uh, clicks, you can do this with Red Track. So there's actually human layers with, yes, yeah, you do, you do. And you have to also listen to, uh, the calls, that's another thing that I yeah. didn't do, Adam told me. And Carlos Corona actually has a very kick-ass tool. Yes. For Because, dude, listening to all those fucking calls is a time, man. I know. And his tool can actually listen to them and tell you. Like, the bullet points. Yeah, exactly, the bullet points. So 
That's the other tool. So you do need good tools as well to succeed. And this comes from good relationships too. You wouldn't know those things without having the relationships yeah. that you yeah. actually said. But just to answer that simple question for you correctly. Yeah, like there's tools, for example, like a Facebook comments can make or break your uh, campaign. So you need to use actually there's API based tools, which will hide every single comment as it comes in, giving you time to go in and then unhide the ones that you think are good. Because nowadays, for some reason, no matter what you put up, even if it's a legit offer, it's like a shower of scam comments, yeah, you know, of course. It's incredible. Like, it's crazy. How can people find you? They can find me at uh, IamAttila.com and also IamAffiliate.com, which is like an online forum, like a community, which I believe is the best way to network and also to learn stuff quickly because you can post your question and get answers from the guys that are actually doing it in real time. I have been around for a long time. People were saying, you should do a course. And I'm like, no, I'll never do a course because courses are usually outdated by the time they become a course, but a forum, Real-time feedback. Real-time feedback. It's more, way more valuable. Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. All right, brother. We'll link back to both those in the show notes. Swan, thank you for joining me. It's been a day. It was a special. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys.